thanks for being here. I think uh, such an event is really important. Um, when uh, Jacques uh, invited me to come here, I was, uh, Jacques, uh, I think uh, such uh, an event is so important, I'll do uh, whatever you ask me to do. And then he, uh, he continued by asking me to present in English. And I said, oh boy, thanks Jacques, I, didn't, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so uh, please excuse my English, it's not that bad, but uh, sometimes I'll be looking for my words. Um, and sorry, I'm not bringing a PowerPoint. I'm more, uh, uh, I'm less of a tech guy and a more uh, emotional guy. So I'll uh, try to keep you awake, even though I don't have like a beautiful slide like that. Um, the, most of the time when we're talking about publicity, we're uh, talking about big corporation. We're talking about big TV, broadcast, uh, satellites, I really enjoyed the, that the comments on uh, satellites TV where we have the impression that we have less control over what comes into uh, on our TV. Um, I think these are good concern. How do we filter uh, publicity coming out from United States to Canada? And I think these are great question, but let's not um, get ourselves too much into that and let's we can move forward anyway. These are concerns that can be uh, fixed. If we look at the Super Bowl in Canada, we don't have the same publicity than they have in the United States. So if they do it for the Super Bowl, I'm pretty sure uh, Bell or uh, other corporation can do it for, uh, for this as well. So, so there's some technical challenge. There's some uh, uh, concerns about that. But I, I think that the most important thing when we talk about kids and about publicity is that we, like, uh, we, took a, we take a look at the values, uh, our Canadian values, and how do we want to manage uh, issues such as obesity to children, but issues as well such as publicity to children. As you might remember, um, well, it's been over 30 years that in Quebec we have, um, we have the law, and at first it was not for food, uh, but uh, with times it was for toys. And, uh, and with times we, it evolved that uh, uh, we need now to uh, think a little bit more about the publicity aim at children regarding food because there's so much of it today and uh, not only on TV. So, uh, so I think uh, this kind of event is really important. I think it raised some challenges, some issues, and I hope it raised some, some possibility and even it builds consensus or where we should be aiming if our goal is to uh, protect children. Um, this being said, <laughs> this is my intro. Huh? Um, my name is François Dicari Gilardo. As uh, Jacques mentioned, I'm an agri-food analyst at Option Consommateur. Um, not going to talk too much about Option Consommateur, but I just want to introduce how Option Consommateur and publicity uh, are linked together. Um, we are a consumer uh, group association, a consumer association. Uh, we are present in Ottawa and in Montreal. Uh, we have about 30 persons working for Option Consommateur on a broad way of, uh, of issues such as energy, uh, insurance, uh, financial. Uh, so so we, we cover, and food, obviously. So we cover a broad uh, range of issues. Uh, we're doing, uh, we have seven lawyers at the, our office in Montreal. Uh, we're doing class action. Uh, one of them uh, is worth uh, billions of dollars. Uh, over five billions of dollars. Some are uh, smaller, 25 million dollars. Lately, we won that one on uh, uh, Maple Leaf. Uh, so, so we we do all sort of action, and um, and um, publicity to publicity is a is an old thing for Option Consommateur. We've been involved and in watching it uh, for the the last 35 years, um, but uh, probably not watching it sufficiently. And uh, we're really glad that Suzy and her team and the team before too uh, came back with the, uh, the idea to, to be vigilant about uh, publicity aimed at children. And I think this is one step we have to redo. We have to reinvest uh, this. And Monique is, uh, is right when she says that Quebec um, watching TV in uh, Quebec, kids watching TV in English um, are not well protected. And I think this is a weakness and we have to to go there and make sure that we, uh, we don't let that go. Um, lately, Option Consumata have been doing two uh, research projects uh, regarding uh, food marketing uh, to children. Um, the, the first one done four years ago, I'd say, 
um, uh, made many recommendation, um, but uh, they they are pretty much what Monique said. Uh, so so we we were we are really in face with that. Uh, and lately, I, I've done uh, with the help of uh, La Coalition Poids a small research project on how we can implement uh, mandatory uh, or a, a ban on uh, public uh, on marketing to children across Canada. So uh, I'll be talking a little bit uh, about that. But first of all, I'd like to talk about. Um, uh, how do we, um, what's Option's position uh, regarding uh, food marketing to children and regarding the, the, the steps that we can adopt as a, as a, a society uh, with values and with uh, interest. Um, in Quebec, we have adopted a, a mandatory um, law for uh, banning publicity to children. In Canada, as uh, Madame uh, mentioned before, um, we have a voluntary code. And I think that the, these codes and the mandatory approach, they're not uh, in contradiction. They're, um, they can be complementary. And this is one of the main points I want to make today. Um, I'm going to expose some of the weakness of the voluntary codes and some of the weakness of the, of the legal framework. and, and uh, and I'll try to show how these uh, can work together to, to have a better uh, a framework for protecting our children. So first, um, the voluntary code. Uh, first weakness. Uh, I think the, 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 the major weakness of a voluntary code is its credibility. Um, and it can be better, it can be worse, but um, as uh, Monsieur Cossette said, uh, no, not Monsieur Cossette, um, What's his name? Can't remember, but he's uh, teaching uh, marketing in the University of Laval. Um, uh, okay. okay, maybe it is. But, um, but I mean, a code like that is not aimed at protecting children. A code like that is aimed at protecting corporation interest in making publicity to children. So, so, so there's a, a, I mean, they can go both in the same direction, but, but we, we need to be aware that uh, when, uh, when corporations do this intervention, um, they want to make sure that they have uh, a little bit more space than they would have uh, with the regulation. So, so it is an interested act to go ahead with voluntary codes like that. So, um, and, and what that brings, it gives more control just to one side of the, of the spectrum of stakeholder. So it's the industry, going forward with their, with their regulation. If you look at the law in Quebec or around the world, you'll see almost no or in a, in a, in a statement. Because or don't mean anything. It means uh, gives way too much uh, possibility to, uh, uh, for their regulies. Um, uh, so, so, uh, but if you look at the, at the code, the initiative uh, the, put forward by the industry, you'll find many, many or. And this is just too weak. It gives too much space um, for, for them to do what they used to do before, but promoting it as a, a way forward, although it might not be a big step. So, uh, so I think as a society, we can ask more than that. So that was for uh, credibility. Um, uh, efficiency. Uh, I, I've heard a lot that, um, that the... the the voluntary codes are more uh, efficient. Um, and and I, I'd like to say that it's true in some way. I think that the industry can turn around and change something and uh, say, okay, we're going in this direction. Although I think that uh, um, it's not always the case. I think that a, a well-designed regulation can uh, have really some, some really good impact. And uh, we've seen it with the um, we've seen it with the, the, the regulation in Quebec and the, the study that Monique did. I, I mean, there is some clear difference between the two places. And um, so, so efficiency and, uh, yeah, so, so um, and especially uh, efficiency, if you look at what's being marketed in the rest of Canada with the voluntary code and in Quebec, we see that, yes, they can turn around, they can withdraw, uh, and they're really, they, they, they have all the, the authority to do it, to, to ask a company to withdraw its publicity if they don't respect the code. Uh, but, uh, but bottom line, we see that there is more uh, unhealthy food being marketed in the, in the rest of Canada at children. So, so, 
So yes, they might be quicker to pull it out if, uh, if it doesn't respect the code, uh, but uh, do, are they um, able to lower the number of uh, publicity? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, another weakness of the voluntary code, uh, of this one especially, is vagueness. And I mentioned it in the, in the question I asked. Um, in the United States, they're going forward with a, a proposed definition for the code. So if it, have, if it has over 210 grams of milligram of sodium, a milligram of sodium in a serving side, um, they won't be allowed to do publicity to children. Um, in the, the current situation today, uh, it's the Burger King that sets the standard for sodium. McDonald's set the standard for sodium. Uh, so it brings all, all this confusion about what's healthy, what's not healthy, and how come does the industry have the right to say, uh, for me, the, uh, an healthy meal has 600 grams of sodium, uh, which looks uh, really, really high to me. And uh, same for uh, added sugar. 25% uh, of added sugar, um, uh, well, it, it's a lot. Um, so, so, uh, so instead of clarifying what's better for you and what's healthy for you, um, this kind of uh, initiatives uh, can create some confusion, which is really, uh, uh, it, it's not really good for, for, uh, for us. Uh, yeah, I, I've already mentioned that. So, 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 so I think that uh, more than anything, um, uh, the voluntary standard that, that, that can be set, um, uh, it's not a bad thing. And I don't think that we should uh, uh, discourage industry to, to go ahead and do the extra step. And I think that their uh, corporate social responsibility is actually doing that, doing uh, their core business, but making sure that while they're doing it, they're going in the right direction and not uh, bringing and society in the wrong direction. So, so I think that a, a voluntary uh, measure can be, can be good, can be adequate, but it has to be back up at first uh, by some clear regulation. So we have to make sure that um, the laws are respect and especially that uh, the way that uh, industry is being conducted, our marketing is being done, respect the basic standard that we set as a society, as, uh, as, um, as citizens in, in a country. So, so, so I think um, it shouldn't just give you the right to operate uh, as it is pretty much uh, with the voluntary standard, but I think that um, it should go, uh, a voluntary standard should start with the regulation as we have in Quebec, and then go forward with extra steps, as McCain did with uh, uh, they're not doing any publicity to children. So, so, so this is the extra step that they decided to do. Uh, and this is, according to me, um, what a voluntary standard should, where a voluntary standard should be in the, the scope of, uh, uh, of the regulatory process. Um, uh, of course, uh, I think that uh, Canada um, should have uh, some some uh, um, some regulation around uh, publicity aimed at children, and oh, I didn't bring it. Um, and uh, and I and we think at Option Consumateur that there's two way uh, that we can do that. Uh, the the first way uh, would be to to have a general ban on publicity aimed at children, uh, which is similar to what we have in Quebec. Uh, I know uh, Suzy uh, have. Uh, uh, a clear, clear ideas on what are the weakness of the Quebec model, but uh, this is one model that we could apply to uh, to Canada, and it could be done uh, quite easily. It would require the, to, uh, to a modification in the Food and Drug Act and a modification in the uh, competition, the Loi sur la Concurrence Competition Act. Um, so, so it's a it's something that could be done if we as a society decided we're going this way. Um, um, it has some, some plus and some minus. Another way we could, uh, um, and, and some people are thinking about that, uh, do a, a partial ban on marketing to children, but only, only for unhealthy food. And uh, this is another avenue that we could have. It's a little bit what's going on right now in the United States. It's, uh, 
in the in the box. Let's say it's not. A, I don't see it happening tomorrow in the United States and having a partial ban on a, uh, marketing on unhealthy food to children. But this is something we could do as well. Uh, but it would uh, require many steps before we go there. Uh, first of all, I think the most important one would be to define what is healthy and what is unhealthy. Um, but but. So, so there is there is there is way we can uh, manage this. There is way that the the government can can uh, put his feet in the place and say, hey, um, as a society, our rate of obesity is growing growing up so so quickly. Uh, we need to act. We're not going in the right direction right now. And marketing is not the only solution. It's part of a bigger uh, um, of a bigger package. Uh, but uh, but uh, we strongly believe uh, in in uh, attention consumata that it's time today to move uh, to move forward and uh, and protect uh, ourselves from uh, from this kind of publicity. Quick word uh, about um, publicity and and media literacy. I know many of you are and you will be talking about this in the next couple of days. Uh, as voluntary voluntary and mandatory approach are complementary. Um, the media literacy and uh, media uh, preventing media view, uh, their complementary approach again. Uh, I mean, I think uh, children are starting to watch TV uh, under a year old. Uh, you can do as much media literacy as you want. Uh, these kids uh, are not ready to, to, to take this knowledge and be critical in, uh, in front of uh, advertising. Um, so, so media literacy is really, really important. But let's not fool ourselves thinking this is uh, sufficient to to go forward. Uh, second point I'd like to to raise here is, um, and then I will conclude, is um, uh, parent uh, responsibility too. Uh, I really strongly believe that the parents have uh, an really, really, really important role in school too in uh, educating children. Although, uh, let's not be fooled again, uh, all parents uh, don't have the same uh, resources to do that. Uh, in Montreal, there's uh, plenty of, uh, of uh, single women, sorry, I don't have the perfect term, femme monoparentale, but uh, um, raising their children, uh, working 40 hours a week, uh, maybe sometimes with uh, an hour ride of metro and bus before they go to work. Uh, let's not forget that 43% of uh, Montrealers uh, earn less than $20,000 a year, uh, which is really not a lot. Uh, and uh, most of the time, these people don't have a car and uh, rely on uh, uh, public transit that is not easy. So, so of course, I'm not saying parents don't have a responsibility. Of course not. But, uh, but uh, it's, not, it's not as easy for everyone to, to, to have a good grip on uh, what their kids are watching on TV or on the internet or uh, anything. So, and I'm sorry about that. I wish we all have plenty of time so, to, to spend with our kids and, and I think it's a broader issue here. But let's not fool again ourselves saying, hey, it's not the, the place of the, the society to, to go there uh, um, and uh, managing what kind of publicity is aimed at our children. It's, parents uh, responsibility uh, I think uh, it's we're getting full again uh, by a, a dominant discourse uh, and uh, and I think we need to be more critical than that um, so uh, so yeah um, so yeah just uh, th these are the the, 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 the things I wanted to say um, if you want more information, it's really technical. Uh, if you want more information on the, the research we did on uh, the legal approach to marketing to children, it's a, it's a little bit technical, so I didn't go too much into detail. Um, but uh, we have a report at Option Consumata. I, uh, I would be really happy to send it to you. It's in French and English. Um, I would also like to say that uh, uh, on a legal point of view, uh, the Supreme Court of Canada and the Irwin Toy's uh, case back in 89, if my memory is good, um, uh, they stated that, yes, it was a restriction of the free speech uh, right, um, the, this kind of restriction, but the reason to do it was better than, 
it was kind of stated that, uh, and I don't have my PowerPoint, but it was kind of stated that uh, although it is a restriction of uh, the free speech uh, right, it is uh, acceptable restriction since we're aiming at protecting the most vulnerable people. So, 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 so I think uh, we have a, a good case there. Uh, I think it's just common sense too uh, that we uh, that we uh, we regulate what's being s seen by kids. Uh, I think uh, as uh, Many Canadians uh, uh, agree with this too. So, um, and we're saying it. Uh, the World Health Organization is uh, uh, making step for that too. Consumer International is asking for it too. Uh, U.S. is making a progressive step in this direction under the leadership of uh, Michelle Obama. So, so, uh, so we're not only by ourselves uh, a bunch of. Uh, uh, of uh, advocates asking for it, it uh, more and more health professionals and uh, and and people are asking for it, and uh, we hope that uh, that it will we go forward. So thank you for your time.